So next up, um, this topic has gotten a lot of questions in our AMAs everywhere on Twitter and on Reddit. Um, I uh, guess it's best that before we go uh, to AMAs and ask questions about this topic, we actually listen to the guy who knows a lot about it. Um, I would love to invite Danny to talk about the bus token. Danny, if you um, are here, I hope that you are here and your camera is there. Okay, awesome. I can see you. I can almost hear you. Hello. Hi, everyone. Now I can hear you. Awesome. Daniel, how good to have you here. Um, I'll just give the floor to you and your really interesting presentation on the bus token. So go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. So before I actually start the presentation, I would also like to uh, get a little bit philosophical of what actually we are doing here and why decentralization is uh, is interesting and important and the way forward. Uh, and for that, I would like to uh, bring up a metaphor that how, how people do things together. So when we're rowing in a boat alone, you know, the two paddles, uh, the boat, the rudder, so all this kind of is within the sphere of control of one person and we can manage. If we have two people in the boat, then it's a little bit more difficult to coordinate, but we can still make do. But if we have a big rowboat with like 30 people in it, then things start breaking down and it, it becomes really, really difficult to, you know, just to, to decide where we're going, how fast we're going, when people are rowing, and so on. And usually the first thing that emerges, the first Thing, how we start moving is that somebody self appoints as a coxswain and you know starts crying out row, row, row. And people start obeying and the, the boat moves forward. And uh, you know, this person is often celebrated as a visionary, uh, but, but it's a very fragile way to coordinate because this one person is a single point of failure, both accidental and deliberate. Uh, everybody submits their autonomy to this one person, which means that even with the best intentions, this person cannot take everybody's interest into account, even to the extent possible. Uh, this person might you know, misjudge how fit the people are and either underuse them or overuse them and get them exhausted before we reach the destination. So this centralized way of coordinating is much better than nothing, but, but we can do better than that. And the ancient way of coordinating a rowboat without the coxswain is singing a song and rowing to the rhythm. And this way, we can kind of take everybody's voice into the into account to the extent it's possible. So if people get tired, the song slows down. Mm -hmm. If people feel strong, it speeds up. And, 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 and it's, it takes a lot of learning how to, how to do it. But if people master this skill, they will be much better than with the coxswain. And what we're doing in the digital realm when we're transitioning from the client server model from the centralized uh, web two world to, to the web three, to the decentralized web, is in a way similar. So uh, the, there are certain things that need to be coordinated and our first attempts at decentralized storage, which came before the blockchain, things like Nutella, they don't really work well because the coordination kind of falls apart like when everybody just wants to grow their own way. Uh, but uh, with the blockchain, things that require consensus, like if I type a name, I would like the same file come up to everybody. This is provided by the blockchain, specifically by the ENS, the Ethereum name service, which was already mentioned here. Uh, so the, so the blockchain is kind of, of a song. 
it's 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 the way we coordinate our digital actions without actually having some centralized entity playing the coxswain. Uh, and what Swarm does is basically the heavy lifting behind the the rowing. So the blockchain kind of provides us with uh, with this coordination, but somebody still needs to push around the data, to store it, to move it, and that is that's what Swarm does. And in order to coordinate the the resources that are scarce in in Swarm, such as bandwidth and storage, we also need a song. And this song is the bus token. So basically, the first people who get who get the buzz, they are going to start singing, and as they, you know, distribute, give give their or sell their bus tokens to other people, basically they will make these other people join together, and this song of storing information will become you know, bigger and louder and more beautiful. So basically this is, this is the metaphor how, how I see what we're doing. And so now a little bit, let's delve into, into the, the score oh, of, this, yeah. of this song and see what the, what the bus token actually is. So let me share the presentation. Mm. So, bus token. So again, the first question that usually comes up mm -hmm. is why don't we just use ETH? Like that's the obvious native token of the Ethereum network. Swarm is tied to Ethereum. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be a inseparable part of the holy trinity of uh, Ethereum. And uh, This changed a little bit because first it became a separate subsystem within Ethereum. And then during this graduation process, it grew into this independent project that we are. And, and uh, because of that, the objectives have a little bit changed. So first of all, now there are more EVM-based blockchains, not just Ethereum. Ethereum itself has hard fork because of the DAO fork, and there's this uh, other hair to the Ethereum heritage, Ethereum Classic, which is kind of the Ethereum orthodoxy after the split, which aims to uh, basically be faithful to what they perceive as the original vision behind Ethereum. Or there's this other project, uh, RSK, which uh, uses Ethereum smart contracting uh, capabilities and attaches them to the Bitcoin blockchain's consensus and all the security that comes with Bitcoin's mining. Uh, and of course, both of them, in order to fulfill Ethereum's EVM's promise, would need something like Swarm. And it would be extremely inefficient and plain stupid for all three EVM-based networks, and there may be even others in the future that would uh, want to join Swarm, to have their own swarms. So store the same info or store largely the same information under the same address, and yet not take advantage of the redundancy of the efficient allocation of resources between these storing nodes and so on. So uh, because of this multi-blockchain nature, uh, the native token of one of them, Ethereum, is no longer adequate from that, from that point of view. And also the market price of this token, if it's tied to ETH, then it is subject in addition to the natural fluctuations that come from, you know, Swarm's own uh, ebb and flow of trading and, and usage, uh, 
it also will become subject to fluctuations that have nothing to do with swarm. So because of that, because of all these things, it has been decided that instead of using ETH, uh, swarm is going to have its own token, buzz. So what is it? Most importantly, uh, it is the means of deposit and payment. Uh, let's begin with payment. Uh, so there are consumers and there are providers of uh, resources in the network. Some people uh, download files, other people uh, root it to them, yet other people actually store them. And uh, in order to allocate these resources efficiently, in order to encourage economical use, in order to encourage adequate supply, uh, there needs to be some tokenized exchange between uh, the consumers and the providers. And of course, this is very dynamic. We're actually one second a consumer, the next second they might become a provider. So this can change uh, quickly within really several times in a second even, who consumes and who provides. Uh, but also Swarm, because it provides long-term storage, it deals with promises that I will store this information for a certain period of time. And in order for this promise to be credible, there are some deposits which are subject to uh, slashing in case the promise is broken. So uh, for these two purposes, we use an ERC20 token initially on the Ethereum network, but as I said earlier, our objective is eventually to create a multi-chain token, which is going to be uh, movable between these three uh, EVM-based networks. So basically you lock up the token on one network, one blockchain, take the proof of it being logged to the other blockchain and unlock the uh, token on the other blockchain. And so the token can travel between different blockchains and coordinate the uh, efforts of the bees that form the uh, network. So the next question that is very natural to ask is, okay, but how does this token, how, how does BUS come into existence? So we are con oh, so we're conducting an initial sale, uh, which uh, is uh, going to allocate uh, tokens to uh, investors, just like uh, Ethereum was allocated initially. We don't invent anything here; it's very closely based on Ethereum experience. And later, it will only be issued against hard deposits against uh, Dai. And finally, I would like to show you the answers that we have to the what if question. So what if the contract gets hacked? What if MakerDAO gets hacked? So we have an emergency shutdown procedure for the bonding curve contract that issues the tokens against our deposits. But this is not going to be the end of buzz. It just means that it's no longer issued it's still available, it will work, like Swarm will continue functioning as before, it will keep using this uh, token, uh, and it only concerns about 3% of the total market value. So I run out of time, unfortunately, but if you have questions, please post them in the Q&A section and I will do my best to answer them. So thank you very much. 
Um, yes, Danny, thank you so much for your presentation. And um, you may not realize it, but you made that uh, Telegram group go nuts with this um, announcement that people actually uh, will be able to own and, uh, and trade this token. Um, so you better hop over to that Telegram group and to the Orange Lounge to answer all these questions. Later on, we will see Daniel again for the AMA. And I know uh, there are many questions for you. So I hope um, to see you back at that moment. Thank you so much, Daniel. Sure.